Hello, my friends. Well, welcome to the continuation of our story of the Romans. Okay, so we talked about. I stopped the last session in with the with the a proclamation, so to speak, observation that um, the actual expansion of of um, of Rome took place during the Republic. Uh, the period of Republic uh, and in precisely in the third and second century BCE through the Roman military, right? Uh, so now, who was eligible for Roman uh, military? All male citizens who owned a specific amount of land were subject to military um, service, right? Um, the 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 armor of the Roman um, armies was not that different from the from the Greek hoplites um, hoplites e either except that the Romans apparently had more uh, flexible uh, were, were more flex were more flexible um, than the 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 Greek formation right. And this is what the armor that uh, a, a Roman soldier had to bring, right? A helmet, a social plates, body armor, um, a dagger, a shield, a sword, right? Um, groin protection, sandals, woolen tonic, and a javelin, right? So uh, these all cost money, of course, right? And um, okay, um, so here you're you're uh, although we just learned that it was not until until two hundred CE that all uh, um, conquered populations were granted citizenship. Um, the, the our book claims at one place that unlike the Greeks. The Romans granted the political, legal, and economic privileges of Roman citizenship to conquered populations in two to two hundred CE, right? Uh, and Rome demanded soldiers, right? Don't don't forget wherever the Rome conquered, um, they would give soldiers to uh, to to the Romans. So. The more the, the the Romans conquered, the more soldiers they had to conquer even more, right? Uh, and and some claim that this was the conquest and the sort of uh, unbound resources of uh, military men contributed by these conquered uh, frontiers were were um were one of the reasons for the expansion expansion of Rome the way it happened right okay so we said that the the, the Roman rise to power in the Western Mediterranean against the Carthaginians right against the North Africans right took place basically between the second and first centuries um BCE on its east right. Rome had to come to reckon with um, other powers, of course. Okay, so what happened to the East, right? What was the story of the East? Remember here we had, don't forget our, our chronology here, my friends, right? We had the Achaemenid, Achaemenid Empire, right? from, say, circa 550 to 330, right? Um, before that, we had the Medes, right? 750, this is a 5, 750 to 550, right? The Medes. After the, uh, the Achaemenes, remember, they were toppled by Alexander. The great or the accursed, depending on your point of view, right? Who, who re-established the Achaemenid Empire um, from three thirties 
two, three, thirteen or so, right? For twenty years, right? We established the um the Achaemenid Empire, conquered Egypt, right? Um, conquered all of Anatolia. Um, right. Of course, it it came from uh, Thrace and Macedonia, Macedonia specifically itself, right, conquered India and so on and so forth, right, Alexander the, the Great, right. Once he died in 330 CE, uh, um, BCE, I'm sorry, 313 BCE, my friends, once he died, remember I said at his his lands were divided between three populations, right? The Ptolemies, the, the generals, Greek general Ptolemy came and conquered Egypt, right? With excursions into Syria. Seleucids conquered most of Iran and Mesopotamia with control over over Syria and then the Antagonids here, right, that go out of the picture. But this is this is the this is the layoff of the land, right? Um circa two hundred BCE, right? Uh, Hellenistic kingdoms have risen, right? And Rome, remember, this is still in the period of Roman conquest, so to speak, they are engaged in Western Mediterranean and now they get engaged in Eastern Mediterranean, right? Um, and between 200 and 146 BCE, they wage a number of wars against the Hellenistic kingdoms of the Eastern Mediterranean, right? Um, Okay, and and they came to take over, as we will see, as we have seen, right, um, uh, the Eastern Mediterranean and and carve into the coming to conflict with the Ptolemy, Ptolemy, Ptolemies in Egypt, of course, which they which they um, which they depose, right, and they take over uh, Egypt, right. Uh, the period of Roman, uh, right, and and um, and then Eastern Mediterranean against the Seleucids, right. So that that's that. But I want um, so um, but and and then by by the first century, by the first century, right, in the first century BCE, right, um, came Julius Caesar, right. Uh, and you see that we are already coming into the empire period. Right? Um, which starts after the death, of, death of, the, of Julius Caesar, actually. And you see that uh, Caesar, Julius Caesar, comes and goes into into of um, of course they they uh, they they conquer um, you know the 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 French lands right remember they had um, conquered parts of Spain as well right and they um, they move against the Gauls right. Um, in uh, in in uh, in France, right? They move against the Gauls in France. Who are the Gauls? The Gauls are um, Germanic people, and we'll get to it. Uh, no, I'm sorry, they're not Germanic people. They're the original. They're in the European populations, right? I'm sorry for for that. Forgive me. Um, okay. And uh, Caesar comes and uh, conquers the uh, Celtic powers, uh, peoples of Gaul, which is Gaul, which is modern France, right? 
and and Italy comes into the heart of um, European heartland, so to speak, according to our book. And and this is Julius Caesar, right, hundred to forty four B.C.E. The one of the greatest generals of of the Romans, right. And the background of the Celts in the area, right, is of course, and in Gaul, right, is the Indo-European migrations originally, right? Like, you know, this is the core um, Hallstatt territory, the background where the Celts are actually coming from and they move further west, right? eventually coming into France, right? So that by the end of Julius Caesar, look, they have conquered Syria. Um, this is, um, no, it's not Cappadocia. Um, well, one of the provinces of the, uh, of the, uh, of Anatolia, right? Uh, they, uh, yeah, you see, you ha they have conquered all of all of Spain, all of France, into Belgium and Belgica, right, and 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 North Africa. Um, I'm sorry, they're not getting to Ptolemaic Egypt yet. Okay, so this is how it looks after the death of Caesar. Yeah, my friends. So those who were willing to, the indigenous populations who were willing to collaborate with the Roman, they were given a considerable autonomy, for instance, uh, responsibility for local administration, responsibility to collect the taxes themselves, right? Um, it, every year, a, a senator, every year, a senator would be dispatched to these provinces to serve as governors. So the same problematic that was that in here that was connected to the uh, duration of the rules of the councils, remember? The fact that they were yearly and therefore they were open to abuse Right, they wanted to amass as much wealth as they can possibly they possibly could during their year of appointment. Right, the same was the case with these senators who were sent to various regions, right, to serve as governors of of these regions. Right. So, um, so the, the Roman administration, right, Roman senates i.e. the patricians, but then uh, the Roman Senate came to include actually the plebeians, right, that who had, uh, who had set up the tribunals of the plebs, right, and between them and, and the um, pre uh, plebeians, there were the mercantile, um, I'm sorry, okay, uh, here. Um, population, which were also be which also became very very powerful during the imperial period, i.e., partly the republic period, um, because uh, Roman prosperity was based on its trade, and we will get to that uh, shortly, right? So the governors, these senators that went to these different regions, right, they defended the province against outside attack, right, and internal disruptions, right? They collected ta the taxes and other revenues from the local administrators who had, you know, uh, ostensibly collected it before, and they decided legal cases, right? Um, but this, admin this system proved um, inadequate, right? Officials, i.e. senators, were chosen because of their political connections. They lacked experience, they lacked local knowledge, they were not competent, right? Uh, hint, hint, <laughs> right? 
to, to lead the government, right, my friends? The yearly change of these governments also, um, you know, meant that they had little time to gain experience or make local um, uh, contacts. And although some of them, many were honest, some were unscrupulous and extorted huge sums of money from provincial uh, populace, right? Um, So here we say that Rome's success in creating a vast empire unleashed, right, um, forces that eventually destroyed it, right, um, in the in the third and second century, right, where all the conquests were taking place, right, Italian peasants, right, were away from home on military service for long periods of time, right? When they were away, these peasants who were self-sufficient and had small plots of land, their land was open to investors to take possession, right, of their farms by purchase, deception, intimidation, and so on and so forth, right? Um, and most of the wealth ended up in the hands of the upper classes at any way, right, who used the money to purchase even more land. So that as a result, there were created Roman latifundi, right, or broad estates, small self-sufficient farms of the Italian countryside, right, uh, whose peasants were the backbone of the Roman legions, right, of soldiers, were replaced by broad estates, latifundi, right? These lati it is these latifundi that joined force with the Christian church, right, and create for you the medieval period of European history, right, uh, used to be known as the Age of Darkness. A period that used to be known as the Age of Darkness, which we will get to by the end of our class. Right, my friends? Okay, so big estates towards the end of the um, Roman Empire, right? And Italy, yeah, if you look at this, and, you know, I will let you go back, uh, you know, after you, I have, you have finished the lecture, I want you to come back and, and, and pay attention to the fact, right, that, okay, let's see, uh, Italy imported grapes, exported grapes, right, and I want you um, to look at the stuff that other populations um, contributed, right, um, on, um, from, from their regions, right, gold and silver, from, um, and tin and copper, from, uh, from, um, from Spain, wheat, right, um, from North Africa, or from all of world North Africa, exotic animals, salt, salt lime, uh, limestones, right, um, olives, uh, olives, um, what, pigs, <laughs> limestones, right, fish, uh, glassware, uh, sheep, wheat from Egypt, marbles, ivory, slave, gold, right, from uh, for elephants, right, uh, and spices from Arabia and, 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 and what not. The Romans, in other words, were middlemen, functioned as middlemen. They did not contribute much to this economy, right? They, they integrated the Mediterranean part of economy. Right? Remember the Achaemenids had already done that. Right? 
um, for Asia, right? And the Romans um, finished the work that already the Phoenician, I mean, built upon the trade that the Phoenicians already had constructed, right? Um, throughout their history and, and the Cartaginians, right? Built on that and, and integrated even Western Asia into it. Right, uh, yeah, okay. As a result of all of this, right, that we have been talking about, right, of course, while, as I keep mentioning to you, more than 90% of the population were engaged in farm, farming, right? Um, well, when peasants came, they couldn't find their plot of land, came back from, yeah, the where did where were they supposed to go? They went to the urban centers in search of jobs, right? So there were population growth in urban centers, right? Urban centers that that had did not have the infrastructure, right, to absorb because they were small cities to absorb this this mass population, right? Um, the growing urban masses, idle and prone to riot would play a major role, therefore, in the political struggles of the late Republic, right? So, towards the end of the Republic, remember, we are still in the Republic, right, which only, only, only um, um, finishes um, in the middle of the first century or uh, late first century, right? Um, so you have the decline of peasant farmers in Italy and a shortage of men who owned the minimum amount of property to serve in the military, right? Um, so, so that during one of the uh, wars at the end of the second century against the Cartaginians, right, a new man sort of rose and he was Gaius Marius. These new men, which eventually come to um, rule the empire, right, as emperors, and eventually lead to the breakup of the Roman Empire, as we will see, right, um, were politically active individuals who did not belong to the traditional ruling classes, right um and marius for instance right achieved political prominence by accepting into the roman legions right the poor propertyless men yeah to whom he promised right farms when they retired from their military service right? Smart, smart politician, right? And so these troops, therefore, became devoted to the person of Gaius um, Marius, right? And helped him get elected, right, to an unprecedented and illegal six consulships, whereas councils used to rule every year, Right, my friends, um, Gaius Marius, right, um, was able to manipulate the masses, right, into giving him six consulships, right. These new men, yeah, some of them, yeah, like Sulla, Pompey, Julius Caesar, and Mark Antony, and Octavian, right, who becomes the Augustus, right? Um, they came to rule between 88 BCE and 31 BCE, which is the end of the Roman Republic, right? Uh, ambitious individuals commanded armies that were more loyal to them than to the state, right? And eventually, right, towards the end of the Republic, they came, they, three of these men come to form a 
triumvirate, right? That which lasts from 60 to 53 BCE. This is the first triumvirate, right? And it was composed of Caesar, Crassus, and um, Pompey, right? Caesar, very popular and great legal reputation. Crassus, great wealth and influence within the equestrian mercantile classes and Pompey, who had specta spectacular wealth and military reputation, right? They used the Roman troops to increase their personal power, right? And this led to bloody civil wars between them, right? The city of Rome itself was taken on several occasions, right? Um, uh, and and there was you know there was there was aggression and corruption right also right um, so then we get to the period of Roman Principate and that's when Octavian right um, it begins when um, Octavian right, comes to um, power and it ends by 331 CE, right? Um, so uh, Octavian was a grandnephew of Julius Caesar, right? He came, eliminated all his rivals by 31 BCE, right? Shortly after Caesar's uh, death, Right? And he started refashioning the Roman system of government, right? Um, he fundamentally altered the realities of power, right? And the Roman Empire was divided um, between the triumvirate, right, during, um, during the period of the first triumvirate, right? The, the purple are areas are Octavius, uh, the green one Antonius, right, and the blue one uh, Pompey, right, Pompeius, uh, okay, and, and the, um, the wars between these uh, um, people. So Octavian, right, rules between 63 BCE and 14 CE or, already. He comes to be called the Roman Principe, right? A military dictator, in fact, right? Never called himself king or emperor, claiming only to be a Principe, right? Meaning a first among equals in the restored uh, Republic, right? Um, he eventually came to be called Augustus, right, the exalted one, right, the one who is prosperous and pious, right. Um, he, this became the name that he was, he came to be known um, by posterity, right. Um, okay, and this is how uh, the Roman Empire looks like under Augustus, right, at 25 BCE. Um, when he died in 14, 45 years of rule, and nobody, nobody remembered the Republic anymore, right? Um, Egypt, Octavia, oh, Augustus, it was Augustus who, who conquered Egypt, and Central Europe and added it to the empire, um, only not, not conquering southern half of Britain and modern Romania, which was added later, right? Augustus had allied himself with the equites, right, or the merchants, right? And so end of the first century, right, BCE, right, rise of the Roman merchants, Italian merchants, and landowners, right? The equites were second only to wealth to landowners, right? They were competent, a new civil uh, service was at the request, right, at the, at the 
excuse me, at the foot of the um, um, Augustus and his family, right? Um, um, so popular was so so popular was Augustus that when he died, four members of his family succeeded uh, to the position of emperor, right? Despite serious shortcomings, right? Um, but um, Augustus, on purpose, right, and left ambiguity about who was to be his successor, right? Um, so the position of emperor was never automatically regarded as hereditary, right? Um, <clears throat> okay, and these emperors in reality came to be conquered by, uh, by and, and they came to be, um, um, to be basically chosen by their armies, right? Uh, <clears throat> by the end of the second century CE, CE, so IE, say by by one um, nineties CE, right? Um, a series of capable emperors instituted a new mechanism for succession. They adopted sons, right? They each adopted a son, right? And, and raised him and matured him, right, and shared offices with him, with him, so that they would groom them for successor, right? Um, okay. Uh, eventually, right, the emperors became deified, right? They become, became in the tradition of Western Asia and Africa, right? Um, parts of them, right, they became uh, deified, they became um, sort of gods themselves, like gods themselves, right, in imitation of Alexander who had become deified, right. Um, so there was a cult of worship of living emperor just like, you know, as was the case in Egypt, for instance, although the case Egyptian case is not really uh, emperor worship, you cannot call it, right? So who else we, we should be talking about? We should know, we should know about Roman judges or praetors, right? And the 12 um, ta tables laws was supplemented by degrees of the Senate, um, bills passed in the um, and the assembly and the annual proclamation of praetors or judges, right? Um, and it was these praetors, um, pra praetors, who heard cases and administered and uh, the law. Uh, the law. They became the judges of Roman um, government, right? Um, so at the later Republic, a small group of legal experts began to emerge who would come to engage in analyzing law and legal proce uh, procedures to see what is the underlying principles that they have created, right? And these principles, they applied these principles to the creation of new laws required by a changing society. That is the way that our judicial system is actually supposed to work, right? Um, they were less lawyers, right, than, than teachers in the modern sense, right? Um, okay. Um, so, um, Okay, of course we know that although you know ninety percent was was engaged in agriculture, nevertheless Rome created an uh, a, 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 an urban empire, right? Um, eighty percent were still ag engaged in agriculture, right? 
but the empire was administered through a network of towns and cities, right? Major cities like Alexandria in Egypt, or Antioch, very, very important city in Syria, or Carthage, right, had come to have several thousand populations, right? They say that Rome itself had uh, approximately a, mid uh, a million residents, right? Um, so here is Alexandria, Carthage, and Antioch in Syria, right, my friends? Okay, large cities, right? Um, but um, nevertheless, the large cities provided adequate food and water. This is a system of uh, sewage, right, and uh, of the Romans, right? These are their toilets, and they would go and sit on the toilets and discuss their affairs, right? And then there was a complicated sewage system that would take the sewage um, out to and non-residential areas, right? Um, uh, while well, upper classes, right, lived in elegant townhouses such as this, which had an atrium, uh, an atrium, right, a courtyard with a skylight that comes, right, and rainwater for drinking water, right, a dining room and drinking parties and stuff, yeah. Um, there was a drink for drinking and parties was in the dining room and interior garden and so on and so forth. And uh, of course the famous mosaics of Roman residences, right, um, where walls and ceilings were covered with frescoes of mythological scenes. Um, or um, outdoor vistas to give you an impression of sense of openness in the absence of windows, my friends, right? Um, so, um, these are specimens of um, Roman mosaics and these are uh, reconstructed pictures of Roman and uh, slums where poor lived in crowded um, quarters, right? And this is a specimen of a Roman soldier leading a captive in, in chains, right? Um, and so on and so forth. This is the um, forum of um, Rome itself, right? Uh, Okay, um, so after the early 2nd century where the conquest stopped, I mean after the conquest stopped, um, the slaves, right, were no longer plentiful or ex inexpensive uh, and the landowners needed a new source of labour. Right, uh, so that over time, independent farmers uh, were replaced by tenant farmers. This becomes the nucleus of your medi medieval towns, right? Tenant farmers, right? Um, they lived on and cultivated plots in return for a portion of their crops, right? in return for sustaining themselves, right? I work for you, you give me enough so that I will sustain myself, right? Um, and this is uh, Roman soldiers, farmers, and various groups, right? And a Roman senior officer in the middle here, circa 122 BC, right? Um, so land became, I mean, wealth became concentrated in cities, but was based on, like always, on the productivity of rural agricultural laborers, right? Um, urban dwellers got rich from manufacturing and trade. 
and again you see Pax Romana, right, Roman peace, uh, the safety and stability granted by Roman might, right, um, but uh, mighty fall. Um, Romans, right, had to um, import massive qualities of grain from Sicily and Egypt, yeah? And therefore, we get to the trade, right? Glass, metalwork, delicate butter, pottery, right? Uh, and other fine products were manufactured all over the frontier, right? On the frontiers, and there was where large markets, right, were, were established, right? Other merchants, um, traded in luxury items and we will get to this right especially silk from China and hello hello Parthians right and uh, spices from India and Arabia right so one of the things that of course you have to keep in mind that uh, that what what was happened what happened during the the um, sort of imperial period of the Romans is that Romanization uh, Romanization uh, spread, right? Latin language and the Roman way of life, right, uh, became one of the enduring conquer consequences of, of, uh, of this Roman Empire, right? Greek language and culture, yeah, which was a legacy of Hellenistic kingdoms, was um, dominated Eastern Mediterranean, right uh, and and the more educated lived in eastern mediterranean right um uh, okay and uh, you know as these towns of urban uh, populations right at the at the height of proper prosperity when these towns um you know uh, were established these cities and they exhibited the Roman form of life, these cities became magnets for ambitious members of the indigenous population to go to the cities in search of work and in search of prosperity and therefore the Roman way of life, right? And, um, and they began to study Latin and began to imitate the conquerors and so on and so forth. Just like, my friends, English, right, has become the lingua franca, universal language, right, of the, um, of post-World War II world, i.e. wherever you go, right, all the literate populations would want to speak English because they want to be connected to this European and American English-speaking world in order to benefit, right, from the new imperial mechanisms that have been created in the world, right, since, uh, since the beginning of the modern period. Which, if you remember, we date from the French Revolution in 1789. Right, my friends. Okay, and it was then that um, the empire gradually and reluctantly gave uh, citizenship right um, men who completed a twenty-six year term of service in the native military units that backed up the Roman legions. Right, were granted uh, Roman citizenship and they could pass their status to their descendants, right? Um, it was in 212 CE, right, that the emperor Caracalla uh, or finally um, 
gave granted citizenship to all free free adult male male inhabitants of empire free male my sisters and my brothers pay attention okay it is during this period of course that we are told that uh, Jesus Christ is born somewhere in from the year 0 to 5 yeah uh, CE current and uh, era or AD anno domini yeah the year of our lord and i will talk about the rise of christianity and religions in a separate uh, um, section my friends but i want you to keep in mind that uh, roman imperialism right also spread um christianity right um from its um nuclei to the excuse me to the other parts of the world so romans right on and on roman roman footsteps was built christianity and that is because the romans before becoming christian uh, believed in pagan religions mystery religions one of the most important of which was Mitraism yeah the religion of Mitra and we'll get to that also and Christianity spreads right Okay, and here, yeah, spread of Judaism, Christianity, and Mithraism. You see where Mithraism um, goes, and uh, Christianity basically follows, right? And we will see that uh, later. We will talk about Jesus and his, uh, his, uh, his, um, doctrines later um, and uh, I want you to keep in mind right that Pontus Pilate right Pi Pilate Pontus, Pi Pontus Pilate right uh, was actually one of the governors that we were talking about right uh, of the imperial period right um and it was he who ordered the persecution of jesus we will talk about paul and his mission later on right and we will wonder whether um yeah uh, we will talk about that later on uh, mystery cults, right? And of course, um, defending vast borders, right? And uh, the Romans had to come to rely uh, on their limes, frontiers, in order to maintain and the frontier defenses limes in order to maintain the boundaries of the empire. And um, they eventually included Britain into it, right? Um, but then in the third century, right, in the 200s, there is again a political military crisis and economic, um, um, economic, uh, problems. This is the historians refer to the period between 235 to 284 CE, right? Uh, when political, military, and economic uh, problems beset 
and nearly destroyed the Roman Empire, right? Um, visible sign of it was the change of uh, rulers, right? My, my friends, most of whom ruled for a few, um, few um, periods, most of whom um, sort of ruled for few periods of time. Uh, I'm going to stop here, my friends, before my, um, my battery goes out. You see it um, up there, <laughs> okay? And I will continue the last part of the Romans in a different session. Um, love you. Bye.